Just good. Good people. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I wanted to share here. Um, also extrapolate on. Uh, so I'll play some of this and hopefully I get to the main part that I wanted to uh, talk about. Which I mean, beyond beyond like you know the devil and the details, um, it's about a realization that we're all trying to get at the same fucking thing. We're all trying to realize uh, what is what and what is real. And uh, these words, <laughs> they they can be tools to help guide guide us. They can be guide. Uh, posts for our intent and for our imaginings to help peer into and see beyond the words. But oftentimes uh, arguments happen or uh, needless things happen because of misunderstandings of intent. And this is um, what a lot of us are talking about with the spells and the spellings and the words. We're not just talking about the concrete words, uh, just the words in and of themselves. We're talking about the, the mixing up that's happening because of this. And yeah, for, for, you know, once you get to a point where you're able to see this, yeah, that's not a factor anymore. That doesn't uh, happen to you anymore. But uh, just because you're at that point doesn't mean that most everyone else isn't at that point and still caught up in uh, miscommunications because this... These uh, slick linguistics has has been set up, and your your understanding and understanding of what these spellings mean. That's the indoctrination that, that a lot of us keep talking about, the indoctrination systems. To confuse your meaning of what is real, that is uh, being played out now, like right now, to the uh, absolute craziest fucking degree. So like, uh, we're seeing like uh, this, uh, this fucking crazy split that's happening. Um, polarizations. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, People are always going to go one way or the other way. It just means uh, there's there's a distinct thing happening now, where people are waking up and then people are choosing to hold on to the illusion very strongly to the point where they have attached their persona and their ego to the illusion. So if that falls, then they think that they are dying as well with it. And for a lot of people, that needs to happen so that they can realize that the illusion is not them. So even though the splitting, um, um, what, what can be perceived as a splitting effect is happening... Um, that's very necessary right now, and it's not lasting. Uh, the things that need to fall away are falling away, and it's happening very quickly where people are realizing what it, what is actually real, and they're like, oh, fuck, you know, I gotta let go of this shit, and so people are letting go of a lot of stuff right now. There's a lot of releasing right now. There's also a lot of bottling up right now. Uh, <laughs> I could just go on and on. There's a lot of everything right now. 
everything. And I was talking about this before, uh, you know, shit hit the fan, quote unquote, is that, you know, the polarizations and the uh, extremes of these things are intensifying and uh, encouraging people to not get caught up in the polarities, to seek homeostasis seek grounding yes release it's very important release but then also ground so yeah i'll play some of this and uh hopefully i get to the places that i want to get to i'm going to be skipping around so bear with me if you will Spells we unknowingly cast on ourselves and others when we don't realize the power in the language and spellings. But it's not just power of language and spellings, it's what you're thinking behind it, Fire Drake. You know what I mean? So I can write a bunch of stuff or say a bunch of fucking words out loud. I'm not casting a spell. There was no intent. I'm playing with words and being all la di da. That's where my intent is. I'm playing with words. Ah. Uh. Okay, so yeah, and you know, most most all of us can come to the agreement that intent is key. Intent is everything. And yes, we can we can uh, spew and spill a whole bunch of shit out, and a lot of us do um, talk a whole bunch of shit that um, doesn't necessarily align with our intent. Or maybe our intent is in another place, and the linguistics are to, you know, uh, provide levity or comedy to uh, kind of dispel an entanglement uh, that the co a collective may have upon a certain ideology. And so through that comedy and comedic relief can come a uh, realization and understanding. But I'm going to have to disagree here. Um, I agree with, with the intent, of course, like, like I just said, but... Uh, that doesn't take away, that doesn't negate the things that are being casted out. And this is why. And maybe I'll, I'll uh, play a, a bit of this as well. I'm talking about meditation. And uh, cultivating a... You don't need to call it anything. It's just taking fucking time to still yourself. That, that's all it is. Still yourself, still your mind, and get right inside. You don't need to call it anything. But in so doing this, you will uh, have deeper level uh, realizations and understandings and realize the things that you previously were engaging or getting or, or maybe getting caught up in were reflections on, on something that you were not willing to go deep enough into skimming um, across the surface of the pond like a pebble and not stilling that pebble so that it could finally sink into the depths of reality and of clarity But every word and and beyond that, um, every thought that you have, and you need to realize that most you need to realize you don't need to realize shit. Um, it would it would be of benefit for one to come to a realization that. Most people have their inner thoughts in the form of wordage and that is a miscommunication that is happening that has been taught to you because 
you can think in a language of dream, of art, of music, of pure poetry. And you don't have to encapsulate that. You don't have to ca encapsulate reality into words. And once you can do that, then yes, uh, the, the spells and in, in, in the wordage and the spellings do not have an effect on you. But that does not mean that they do not have an effect on other people. Because other people, most everyone, is caught up, it is still very much influenced by these words. So that's, that's where I'm getting at with that. I'm not saying that they are the um, end-all, be-all of, of manifestation. I'm saying that they have a effect and the subtlety, the power of uh, suggestion is very great and is, is very much utilized in these programmings, in these um, projects that are used to call o C U L L awareness. That's why it's very important to realize your words. And then I'll flip it, you know, absolutely it's very important to disengage from that because, uh, uh, V Vanetta Bergman comes to mind here. Uh, I'll leave a link to her stuff because that's uh, someone that you guys should check out. Uh, she stopped making videos, but I've watched every single one of her videos, and and she she's it's interesting. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll go off on a tangent here, I guess, on on Vanetta because I just had that name randomly pop up for me. Um, the other day and it's like wow I was just thinking of that and blam but uh if you look a little bit deeper into some things about her um she seemed like a completely different person than what her videos may display which are right on and I, I would um repeat what she says in that once you get caught up in like the uh, esoterics and the spellings and the, and the spells, um, that that can be a trap for you. You ha you have to keep everything open ended, otherwise you're gonna get too fucking caught up in your mind. Because our our you have to realize that the indoctrination system has taught you how to think, how to engage reality. So it's taught you in to get fixated as well and this is also the culture of, of, of fixation and addiction so uh, it's a loop program so you're caught up in a loop program and go round and around and never get out of that so leave everything open ended that's why I repeat what Zen Atman says like it seems to be you know it's a verb leave it in, in fluid motion leave it open ended so that you don't have the option of getting trapped there. But as soon as I think a thought and put someone else into it, and I think that, then that did get out there. So, you know? I'm honest about my drug intake, but that's the worst thing I do. Um, yeah, I'll include this too, because this is very important. Um, and this is, I'm finding a lot of, like, when I say a lot, I mean, from from my intake, from my um, personal perception, um, it's like, bam, 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 right back and forth, like, uh, connections with Genevieve and Zenat Man. <laughs> And it's very interesting. Uh, it, but I mean, just in general, like a lot of sinks are happening. Like honesty, that's all that matters to me. But why do you think that your drug intake is a worst thing you do? Why do you think and Zen just said this to Divine Hazel, you know, with her inflamed uh, knee, which... 
you know, uh, he, he was getting at things, how to heal, and it's like, dude, first and foremost, it's mentality, so whenever you say, and this is the problem that I have with the uh, medical system, is that, you know, uh, the doctors no longer really help the patients, they treat them, they, they diagnose them, and they tell them what they have, so uh, this is... This is a corruption on a very deep level with, with the medical system, with with all, most all systems, is, is the telling, the projecting of, hey, you are this, you have this, you will do this. These are the laws, these are the rules, you will obey. And if you go along with that, if you agree with that in your mind, then you are creating that into the collective. So, as within... As above, so below. It happens with you as well. If you are having things happening to you, and you want to get convoluted or, you know, to... Basically, it's just um, people have been taught to confuse themselves. So, um, keep it simple. Kiss. Keep it stupid simple. <laughs> so, uh. Like, I recommend to people, it's like, take away, um, whenever you have a blockage or something happening, um, whether it be in your life or in your body, take away first, fast. And then you can fast with, with the physical level, you can fast from things that you engage in. But but do the fasting and then realize through that fasting the clarity that is gained. And then you can see, ah, this is what I was doing, this is what I need to engage. This, this is what I need to engage instead of uh, being caught up in the pain or the inflammation. And not even bodily inflammation, but stagnation of the mind. And then when flow happens, we, we just, we, we can go with it and we can release um, seamlessly. And that's key. I think that's bad at all. Why is it worse? Why is it... See? Like, I don't understand that. Words are, Michelle, words are spells. That's why we must be careful with what we say. Yeah, but it starts with what we're thinking. Because you can hold in everything, but if you're thinking it over and over and over, you cast it as well. We manifest reality with our thoughts. Yeah, and, and I mean, I don't need to repeat what I, what I already said. Um, Most people can only think in words because you've been taught to do that. So you're going to manifest reality in those encapsulations. So this is the key here. Um, I'll, I'll put a timestamp on this because this is very important. The control of what people manifest is controlled by the wordage because people have their inner dialogue in the wordage and once you dissolve that and you can have your inner dialogue as dream time as imagery as art as fluid motion as music then you release the spells that's of the utmost importance mm -hmm. This is on a collective level. So collectively, you know, it's a big deal. That's why, you know, it's baby steps. Yeah, that's true. Tiptoe.
kitchen and we'll be all gonna go play in the rain. Let's see if I can find the places What's here. Oh, oh, I went too far. What you need to release and heal very quickly now, so you can get real and get good. Yeah. It does happen all so quickly. It's a blink of an eye. It's, I was this person this morning, I'm this person this evening. Uh, it's having that thing happen three times a day sometimes of of certain realizations that are just so like big. Yes. Um, basically, I, I she just read one of, one of the comments um, that I said. I, I didn't. <laughs> she didn't read all, all of it, but essentially, it's it's that um, what I've been saying is that the polarizations are getting more intensified. So whenever I say it's happening more quickly, I just mean everything. Everything's getting more intensified. Um, the quote-unquote good and the bad is getting very intensified now and this is why it's so very important to utilize your power of choice to choose what you want to allow in your reality if someone's throwing shade at you or throwing I said shade I don't know how that came out but uh whatever it is whatever kind of energy um someone's uh giving you and it's up to you if, if you want to feed into that or if you want to disengage and and I will also add that try not to personify the message and the things coming out of people onto those people and, and realize the things coming through them are not necessarily them yes they are choosing those things but that doesn't mean that that is what they are and that's not an easy thing to do by any means that takes time to be able to discern this and to cultivate um, a level of awareness to where you don't attach the messages to the messenger and I'm not saying I don't ever do this by any means like anything <laughs> anything that I uh, speak about or if people want to say that I preach have that um i'm not holding myself on any standard um if anything um i'm giving myself reminders here of what i need to work on and hopefully um other people can gain something from that as well I pray for compassion, but I keep my knife at my side. My words are my weapons, and my weapons are my words. Another word play, you know, swords, swords and words. But, you know, once again, we, we got to move beyond the words. So I'm trying to get to a couple of places here. I don't know. All the systems set up to distract and destroy are turning in on themselves. As without, so below. As with, so without. I didn't say the same way you said that. It's happening individually for people very quickly now within. Yeah. So just the uh, intensification of the clarity and, and essentially purification. Okay, that's what we're here to do, to be alchemists with the energy that's around us. I believe that, but I believe that it's for the greater good of the all. So, therefore, it's not about me. It's about us, like, collectively. And then, it, you know. Yes, and this is um, also dissolving the layers, you know. Um, the, the little self and, and the big self, as in the all, that is. And realizing that the, the things that we are in taking in the little self has a big part to play in the big self, the collective. All out there is a reflection of in here. And our perception acts as a magnet and also 
Refracting the energies that we attract, witness, and choose to engage. So, yeah, um, you know, well, we, we hear about reflecting, but then, you know, we don't hear so much about refracting. And so that, that's what I was trying to p portray is the... Um, basically the perception so so whenever something is reflected you know back to us it, it's um, has to go through the layers of our perception so the refraction that happens of the light and of the awareness um, and so it's up to us how we choose to see things that's the refraction So yeah, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try to get to the point here, but uh, if I don't, I'll just I'll just read this card that I drew, and we'll end it there, because I don't want to make this too long. Doesn't matter if I Billy Idol is it in Rebel Yell or. <laughs> See a solution everywhere in the comments for you that way. Ah, yes. <laughs> the stony effects. Not facing it. And one of the ways that this happened to teach me, because I got to learn my way. I don't have people in my bubble. I don't. It's one time writing to someone who I really I'm not going to find it. It's a bit rare that it happens to me now. I'm probably not going to find it. I don't go there when it gets excited. Oh my god, the toes. Nope. Nope. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it flashed me back last year. I have a lot of different channels that um, resonate. Okay, so yeah. Um, one of the things I want to clarify is that uh, something that... Uh, SS brought up was about the shadows and uh, I was I made a comment that you know essentially that the shadows are unique for every individual because the, the perception and perspective of every individual is unique and then I don't remember exactly what Genevieve said but that she didn't understand maybe what I was talking about um so yeah, I wanted to clarify on that, is that, um, you know, people see shadows as a certain something for themselves, so so for them, it, it's something, and for other people, it's something wildly different, and uh, I'll, I'll uh, recall a memory that I have sitting out on a, uh, a train bridge, and... Uh, getting getting very very stoned with with my girlfriend and then she makes the comment that uh just so you know there there's a lot of you know shadow beings around us right now so uh I think all I said is that I know that it's it's all good because uh, you know the <laughs> it's hard to, to explain things to people whenever you are um, opening up certain awarenesses and portals and then they are actually able to witness it uh, the happenings and they don't necessarily understand what they are seeing so so for them it means something different than for the person that is um, allowing things to uh, be seen, essentially. And that's not to say that it was all me. I was the one creating it. No, it's just whenever you're in the... bubble of someone that can um, 
open up different um, dimensionalities and areas to where other people, basically people who create space, people who create sacred space, like Genevieve's live streams, she creates sacred space for people to come in and to share and release and to heal. So that's essentially what I do whenever I'm around someone and if we have, um, you know, a one-on-one -on -one time um, where, where we can open up, then oftentimes things are witnessed, things are seen even. So I, I get this. I, I used to get this often when, when, whenever I used to have one-on-ones with people. I don't, I don't really do that anymore. But, uh, yeah, it's just their recollection, their perception of what is happening. So for me, um, shade or shadow it is... Or even entities that, that want to exist in the shade, in the shadow. This I don't have any uh, sway or say in... I don't have any want, any desire and into making something... Um, something like this, something like... Uh, seeing shadows or seeing um, different spectrums of light or um, um, beings of, of light or orbs or uh, basically like seeing stars in the daylight and uh, superimposed upon your vision. I don't have any desire into making something anything less or more than what it is. I just see it for what it is and appreciate it for what it is in the moment. And so I don't, I, it doesn't matter to me if that's an angel that comes to me or if that's um, a vampire or a succubus or a demon that comes to me. I see it for what it is. I recognize and acknowledge why it is coming to me in the moment. What I need from it and what it needs from me. And not getting too attached to either polarity. That is key. So yeah, I'll end it with that. And then uh, reading this card. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully we can see it somewhat. Probably not. Nope. Not really. Eh, a little bit. But that is the uh, Seeker of Swords. It's a dude on a white on a on a <laughs> pale horse. Um, holding a sword up into the sky as rain is coming down on both of them. Him and the horse, his steed. Seeker of Swords. A lean and eagle eyed young man sits firmly on a rearing horse. His eyes fixed on his appraised sword. Upraised. <laughs> They gallop through a hard landscape, straight into a rainstorm. That's, that's very on point. The Seeker of Swords rides in on a cold wind, heedless of human feelings. He cares only for his ideals. He rushes into the unknown without fear but also without preparation. His ideas can create chaos, conflict, confusion in your life. At the same time, these ideas can widen your perspective and stimulate necessary changes. 
the seeker may convince you to abandon responsibility in order to follow a new and exciting possibility. The seeker of swords may be a persuasive but reckless person in your life, or he may represent your own restlessness trying to incite change however it can. If you choose to follow his lead, proceed with caution. Be careful not to hurt others or to forsake things that are important to you. So yeah, that's very interesting, because um, that's, that's basically Zen Atman right there, um, and, 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 and the realization of why people attune with a certain energy, because it's something within them that they, they need to deal with. So whenever someone, uh, you come across someone that, that um, you know, this, this fucking word that I don't like to use triggers you whenever someone brings up something in you that that causes like a stirs something inside of you causes agitation or whatever it may be that's because there's something inside of you that you need to it's not the people that you need to project and to say that oh these people are upsetting me or no yeah maybe that's happening but it's because you have chosen to tune into that so even making the choice of, you know, I'm done with that energy, I'm not going to engage it anymore, well, that's fine, you're making a choice, but also choose to realize why you engaged it in the first place. There's stuff inside of you that need, needs to come out to uh, have clarity and levity so that you can really see it for what it is, so that you can finally see it for what it is and then release it, because we can release stuff but until we truly know why it came up for us, why it was needed, because it is needed. Once we come to that realization, then the true release happens. And it's not just a release. It's a transformation. It's a transmutation. It's an integration of what we had experienced. So that's something that I didn't show here is that she, she uh, read one of my comments and it was like, uh, you know, release is very important, but the grounding afterwards is very key. And that's what most people don't do. You know, oftentimes we see people have a release, have, you know, a cry, um, you know, get it out of their system. But what do they do right afterwards? Most everyone, they go right back into their repeated cycles and patterns and loops. And so you're just going to keep repeating your fucking reality, people. You have to have the release and then have the grounding. You have to have the release and then take the time. Get out in nature. Let that fucking shit come out your soles of your feet into the soil. Smell the roses. Smell the flowers. Smell the essences of nature, the pollens. Reground yourself, reattune your body. Once you have that release, it's because you are opening yourself up so that you can take in truth, more gnosis. So allow that process to happen. Don't just release and then go right back into your own programs. Because that's a lot of times what people do. So yeah, I just wanted to share some of that, some of those messages, so some of those reminders. I don't ever say anything um, thinking that people don't know it. I'm just giving reminders and um, also reminding myself. You know, A lot of this stuff is things that I need to hear and do for myself as well. So just know that you're not alone and we out here, we, we in this together. Um, be true and be real to you 
and all else will fall into place. Peace.